Hello, I'm Karen. I'm a Move It or Lose It instructor and physiotherapist. And in this video, we're going to look at the basic structure and function of the spine. And I'll be giving you some hints and tips to help you keep your back healthy. If you want to join in with some posture awareness and correction later, make sure that you have a sturdy chair nearby and that you're wearing suitable footwear. Okay, so our spines provide the main support for our bodies. They allow us to move and protect our spinal cords. And all of these structures make up the spine. We have bones called vertebrae in the spine, discs, the spinal cord and nerves, ligaments, muscles and tendons. But for you to be able to picture that, I have a model of the spine to show you. So this is the back of the spine from the back of the skull down to the tailbone and this is the front of the spine. And the spinal column is divided into three sections. We have our cervical spine, our neck, seven bones allowing head movement. We have the thoracic spine, 12 vertebrae where the ribs are attached protecting the heart and lungs and there tends to be a little bit less movement there than there is uh, above and below. And then we have five sturdy lumbar vertebrae supporting the weight and allowing us to lift and carry. The spine also includes the triangular bone at the bottom, the sacrum, and the tiny little tailbone, the coccyx at the bottom. And this is attached to the pelvis. So from the front of the spine, we can see that each vertebral body has a drum shape and it has um, an arched bone to allow the spinal cord represented here by the yellow plastic to run through. And it has these knobbly bits, the spinous processes, which is where the muscles and tendons attach. Each vertebra is separated by a disc and these discs act as shock absorbers. They have a soft center and a firmer outer layer. Do you know that at night, when you lie down, the discs absorb water and elongate the spine and in the morning you're taller than you were when you went to bed? <laughs> and it also helps explain why we gradually re uh, reduce our height as we get older because when we're younger the, the discs are spongy and thick and as we get older they become thinner and harder and the height of the spine reduces. The spinal cord runs from the brain down through the spinal column and pairs of nerves come out at each segment and obviously these nerves continue down to the area of the body that they supply. So you'll have heard of slipped discs but discs don't slip and disappear somewhere. They can tear and bulge represented by this red area here. And if the soft centre bulges out and presses on a nerve, you might experience pain in the area of the body that the nerve supplies. So your lumbar spine supplies your legs, your thoracic spine around your rib cage and even to the front of your chest wall, you may feel pain. And your neck, your cervical region uh, can produce pain in your shoulders and your arms. And of course, any injury to your spinal cord and nerves not only produces pain, but can produce numbness and loss of movement as well. You have little facet joints connecting two vertebrae, which allow movement, but are also subject to wear and tear and arthritis there, which can cause pain and stiffness. We can't see on the model, but your ligaments are strong fibrous bands, which attach all the bones together. And then your muscles um, are over the top of, of the whole structure. So your main muscle groups in your back are your extensors down the back of your spine, pulling your body upright. Your flexors down the front of your spine with which the, ab uh, with the abdominal muscles, your tummy muscles, allow you to bend forward and also protect the back from uh, any load on lifting and, and carrying. So seen from the side, the spine adopts an S-shaped curve in at the neck, out over the thoracic spine and in at the lumbar spine. And this S-shaped curve is like a spring 
supporting your body and keeping us balanced and mobile. So poor posture in itself can cause back pain when we lose those spinal curves. We increase the load of the, on the discs of the lower spine and we can produce pain in our upper spine from a protruded, pushing forward head position. So if you imagine that this ball is a head and my arm is a spine, that position is comfortable when you, your head is, is, is balanced above your spine. If the ball moves forward and is held in that position for a while, the back of the wrist is going to become sore and painful. And in fact, um, an overstretched muscle becomes a, a weak muscle. And if that ball was heavier, something like a bowling ball, I would eventually drop that ball, the muscles would give in. It's exactly the same as having your head forward of your body and putting strain on the back of your neck. And I'm very conscious of that when I'm working at my computer. We do spend a lot of time in that slumped position. So let's do a little bit of posture correction, which you can join in. And I'm going to move to my other chair so you can see my body a bit better. Okay, so I'd like you to sit away from the back of the chair if you can. I'm just sitting sideways for demonstration purposes. And allow your body just to sit a slumped forward. Now imagine you've got an invisible thread coming from the top of your head and pulling you up to the ceiling. I might even have a helium balloon attached to it, so it's really going to pull you high. And if you imagine that, you will automatically adjust your position and feel that like you're sitting taller. Just try that again, going back into a slumped, relaxed position and then feeling that you're stretching up tall, which is a lovely exercise in itself for posture correction and back mobility. We can't sit in a rigid sergeant major position for very long without feeling uncomfortable. So just ease off that, that upright position until you feel comfortable there. If you're sitting for any length of time, you may benefit from having some support in your lower back, a cushion or a rolled up towel. Also, just bear in mind that if you sit in a chair where your hips are much lower than your knees, slumped down to a low chair, it will just encourage that bent position of your back and your head being jutted forward. If you want to stand up to do posture correction and standing, make sure that you have your chair nearby if you need it and your feet hip distance apart. And again, imagine that invisible thread that's pulling you up through the ceiling, out of the top of your house, okay? And again, you'll feel that you're, you've grown an inch or two if you're doing that correctly. Your head should be positioned between your shoulders, over your heart, pelvis and feet. Sometimes when we stand in that position though, we can stick our bottom out a bit too far. And if that's happening to you and that's uncomfortable because you're exaggerating that curve too much, just tighten your tummy muscles up, tuck your tailbone in and just adjust your position and that should probably feel more comfortable for you. Another tip to help prevent your head being stuck forward too much is an exercise called retraction. If you put your fingertips on your chin, you can be sitting or standing to do this, and then move your chin away from your hands as if you're recoiling in horror. <laughs> Are you making double chins? So from the side, fingertips on chin, moving your head back. A nice stretch down the back of your neck and your upper thoracic area, really good for posture correction. So all of these things to avoid stresses and strains on your spine are really important. And one of the worst things for creating back injuries is incorrect lifting technique. I would advise you just to watch while I give you a demonstration of this. This is an empty box. So you have to imagine it's heavy for demonstration purposes. You can carry up to five times the weight of an object if you carry it close to your body at elbow height compared to being out in front of you or above shoulder height, or below knee height. So the first rule of lifting is, if you can avoid it, please do so. And if you can avoid lifting from too high or too low, even better. If you've got something that you're moving regularly, try and have it positioned between shoulder and sort of knee level. Okay, so if you are having to carry something and put it down and pick it up, keep it as close to your body as possible, get as close as you can, 
to the surface that you're going to put it down onto. Your feet have to be slightly wider than hip distance apart or one foot slightly in front of the other and you're going to keep your back straight and use the strength of your legs to lift and bend. So when you're bending, bend your knees, stick your bum out of it, pop your object down and then when you're straightening up use the strength of your legs or some support to strength, straighten up again. And again when you're lifting, you're bending your knees, holding onto the box, bringing it towards you, straightening up and stepping round rather than twisting round before you move away because bending and twisting is one of the worst things that you can do for your back. It really increases the risk of injury. So that's why all the exercises that we do, like knee bends and sit to stand, which are two of the key exercises for strengthening the legs, can also help us to be more efficient at lifting. Any upper limb movements and exercises such as bicep strengthening or upper back strengthening and here I have a resistance band to increase the work that my muscles and my back have to do, squeezing my shoulder blades together. That's all going to work on strengthening those lifting muscles. So my main message to you really is to avoid prolonged sitting in a bad posture, to get up and move around more often, to correct your posture regularly during the day, to keep those muscles strong to help reduce the risk of injury. Mainly just enjoy your exercising, keep your backs healthy and keep safe. And thanks for watching. Bye.